Hey guys, Dr. Ken Norper here. Here's some good advice for you, you know, especially you guys that like to make food plots for hunting. You know, originally the idea of food plots is to provide food for whitetails. And in some ways it's kind of silly because whitetails don't starve during spring, summer, and fall. But all the food they ever needed, all they've never needed for 10,000 years has been out there and they do just fine. They starve in winter. Now, if you really want to plant something in your hunting area that's going to be good for whitetails during winter months, plant them a, a, something like this. Up where I hunt, this is called a red osier. And this comprises about 85% of the winter diet of the whitetails in my hunting area up near the Canadian border. Now, red osiers live in damp soil around edges of swamps and places like that. They like wet feet. <laughs> and this, this osier and the whole bucket of them here came from an oversized plant in my yard called a red bark dogwood. If you go to a nursery and buy them, same plant. It's also called red bark dogwood. They're really easy to grow. You can clip off pieces like this from an existing plant and put them in damp soil like along the edge of this swamp here and they'll take root and grow. And the more you grow these things, and the wonderful thing about red osiers is Deer can come by here this winter and eat the tops off of all of these. They just love this stuff. And in place of two branches, next year there will be three, four, five branches. It seems like they're a plant that loves to be eaten by whitetails. And they provide good, nutritious food for whitetails during the winter months. So if you were to go out there and work as hard as you do at providing uh, turnips or clover or alfalfa or something like that in a food plot. If you work to hide as hard as at that at providing this kind of thing, then you're really going to be doing something, a big favor to whitetails. And you're creating an area that's liable to be, in time, a favorite feeding area of whitetails after the second week in November. And that's most of the whitetails we take each year in November are taken at feeding areas where there's lots of these growing. These and sugar maple saplings, which are also red. So keep that in mind. You want to do some really good things for whitetails, give them food that'll get them through the winter. Not spring, summer, and fall, but winter. Middle of the winter. Put in plants like this in your hunting area. Nothing easier. These take work real easy. Um, they don't even take root in a pail of water in, in time. What I have to do is make, make a little hole in the ground, stick this in the hole, and there you go. White tail food, what could be easier? That's all these plants along here, they're going to create a nice patch of red over here for white tails this coming along and for years to come. These things just keep coming back. Whitetails can eat them practically the ground. They just keep growing back. So once you plant them, that's almost good for 20 years or until the thing is overtaken by forest trees. But those are wonderful food for whitetails. Okay, keep that in mind now. Um, well, thanks for watching. And you want good advice, good tip, this is really a good one for you. And uh, with that, uh, thanks for watching. And before you click off, subscribe, would you please? And hit that thumbs up button, because this is a great trip. You know, this will make a big difference in your hunting in the future. Not turnip <laughs> or clover or, or mineral blocks or whatever. This is something, you, you couldn't do a better favor to the white tails living in your area.
Alan's not doing too good. Okay, thanks a lot guys. See you again soon. Be sure to visit my website. Here's the link. Here you'll find links to my blog posts, my Twitter account, my YouTube account, my Amazon store with links to my ebooks, my son's eBay store, a money saver if you're ordering from Canada or other countries, my website bookstore, and much more.